YouTube, it's Hawk from Startups Airsoft, and today I'm doing a loadout uh, video of my own loadout. And I, my loadout is set up for a DMR role, which I really enjoy. And uh, it, I have a custom built one here, I built it myself from the internals up, and I'm still working on it. But I'll get to that later. Uh, yeah, it's not, too, not a whole lot to look at, and I'll just do like a quick little sit around with it. And as you can see, there's some pretty cool stuff on here, like uh, this MK9, because a lot of people haven't seen that kind of way of weapon before, right? But anyways, uh, I'm not going to waste too much more time on this part here, and I'm just going to pan down to the feet, and uh, talk about the boots for a couple seconds, and work our way up, and uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Alright, so these boots you're seeing here are by Danner. Uh, they're I think made specifically for the Marine Corps. They have the Marine Corps logo. Uh, you might be able to see it right here on the heel area. I think they'll run you about $200-ish. And a lot of people are saying that's a lot for uh, for boots. And I agree because I'm not, I'm not a shoe person. But I did a lot of work over the summer and got these because I have a bad right foot. It just tends to get hurt a lot. And so I needed some boots with really good support, really soft. Don't weigh too much, they're about a pound and a half. I can probably I could probably run a mile on these in maybe six minutes, thirty seconds, which is average time with my with running shoes maybe a little faster. But they're um very comfortable, excellent padding. They're steel toed as well. And uh, I'd highly recommend these boots because they're they're awesome. But I think you have to go to Daniel's website directly to get these, but they are very much so they're they're worth the money. They're excellent. I love them. And uh, yeah, that's basically my whole. Uh, that's all. All there really is to see on my feet because that's what belongs there. Is shoes. And uh, I'll just uh, head up onto the next thing here, which will be my belt. All right. So starting from right to left on my belt, this is uh, one of those belts you get with those tactical vests, which looks like everyone's beginner vest. It's called a BDU belt, I think. Uh, I don't, I don't think that's what it is. This, this isn't a BDU belt actually, but it's listed as BDU belt a lot. But it was like you can probably get it for like four dollars, I think. And it's uh served me very well, and I really like it. Moving on to the next thing, I have the MK9 by Echo One, which is my uh, my main main uh, melee weapon. You can actually attach this to uh, any gun that is M4 bayonet uh, compatible. It has a little lock on right here. And I have an L Pega, I just stick it on because it's fun. And I have a uh, Phantom dump pouch with my uh, with one of my mags in it, which I'll go over later. And I have a snake bite kit because we do have some venomous snakes here. And although it might not save your life and prevent you from going to the hospital, it will slow the effects of the venom. And I mean, that's better than nothing, right? So the next thing is this uh, canteen. Yeah, I'm not sure who it's by. To be honest with you, I got it in a birthday gift bag or goodie bag or whatever. Uh, this this canteen here, and then I got this from an actual military base. It was Air Force in uh, Colorado. It was Buckley, and I got that for like five bucks, I think. And it's just a uh, Alice, as you can see here. And I have this Condor pistol in here. It has a four stick up holster, which is taped on there and fell through, but it's working very well, so I have no problem with it. And I have a KWA ATP. Let me just fix this line here really quickly. Uh, gas blowback, as you can see there. And I think arguably this is one of the best pistols on the market. It's fantastic and I love it. I highly recommend it. And it's not too expensive either. It's uh, very efficient as well. This is my lower setup. Uh, I, as you can see, I have a lot of stuff on, around my hips here because I don't like to have a bunch of things like cluttered here. And you have my bigger things on the back because it's just easier to get down on the ground and crawl when I don't have everything there. The only thing that's really going to hit the ground is this part of the pistol right there, and I usually crawl slightly on my left side anyways. So yeah, now let's move up to the chest part, which is the coolest part in my opinion. So uh, now we're moving up to the chest area here. And the vest I'm wearing is the Avengers JPC, and it's about $60, and it's a very lightweight vest, and uh, it actually comes with plates, 
and I have my back bland because it hurts my back to be bent, like bent down like that for a while. But I have my front one removed. So from uh, right to left, I have this uh, Condor flashbang uh, pouch here, which doesn't fit flashbangs unless you really try, which I don't carry at this moment, but I plan on getting some soon. And then I have a, a S-Cobra cheap little walkie-talkie in there. And I have the Phantom, uh, what is it, Phantom M4 pouch, uh, that's two of them right here. And then they had retention straps over them, but I decided to take them out because I don't want to have to go like this and pull them off every time, just being able to like just have my gun and just pull out my new mag and put it in. And then behind that I also have three more, which are, these are Elite Force bit caps by the way. Uh, they do fit the G&G &G CM16 if you're wondering. Oh, like such a, all right, that's so weird. Uh, it has this Velcro, uh, a lot of Velcro real estate on the front as well. Uh, I used to have my hazard fort here, but it was interfering with me pulling my magazines out, so I had to move down to my hip, which I have no problem with. I kind of like it there. Now on my sides, I don't have anything on my side, uh, my right side, uh, or my left side, or on my back. It's just on the front, easily accessible. And I also forgot to mention this, uh, this KWA ATP magazine in some, like, pouch, I don't know who makes it. I think it's by Condor, probably. And it's a 1911 pouch, actually, and I cut it so it fit this. I didn't realize that it was a 1911 pouch, and I put it in the car on accident. Whoops. I also have this dead rag, which belongs in this cargo pocket, which I'm just going to toss to the side. And that's, that's uh, my chest set up here, remove on my head, and then remove on my rifle. On my head set up, I have a Special Forces uh, ACU Balaclava. I mean, that's the name of the company, actually. Spec Ops or Special Forces. It's Spec Ops, that's what it is. It's Spec Ops. Let's not get distracted here. Spec Ops Balaclava and ACU from my original loadout uh, that I posted in February way back when. A TMC 20 gauge steel mesh mask. Uh, with it is trimmed. I have the chin trimmed here and the nose so I can put my goggles over it better and so I can actually like look down and it's not poking me in the chest or anything annoying like that. And I have uh, revisions in the uh, OD frame with the clear lens. And I have the Matrix Mitch 2000 helmet with a cat's eye band around it for nighttime identification. It's not a lot to look at but I plan on mounting a camera here eventually or on the side or whatever I want to get. And I have an American flag patch here, of course, for identification again. And, uh, uh, finally we're just going to be moving on my gun in a couple seconds here. On to the gun, I'll be starting from uh, right to left again. I have a, uh, not sure what kind of flash hider this is on there, but it's got like 16 in the name, is counterclockwise. And then a 20 inch government profile barrel, and then a Magpul carbine length um, handguard, and then some delta ring, and then a G&G CM16 upper and lower receiver with a non-functioning charging handle, which I actually modified to where you need to pull it back to fully disassemble the gun. This gun actually was a G&G CM16 Raider, like the CKB version before. And there's a stock, uh, crane stock, with a metal buffer tube, and then custom wiring here since I was having some issues with my other wiring which was from a Seaman Gear box actually. Now on the inside I have a, uh, a 6.01 uh, 6 type bore ABG barrel that's 510mm long by Angel Custom, a R-Hop, a metal pop-up system, and uh, that's basically just my barrel set up there. And then on my gearbox I have, what is it, an ICS cylinder head and then a ICS Cylinder, or not cylinder, uh, what is it? Not a cylinder, uh, piston, that's the correct word. And 100 to 300 Helicio gears for high torque, and I'm putting an M120 spring in it, and then getting a Titan A1 Infinity motor, and then I'm putting an E trigger inside of it as well, and then I'm putting a full cylinder in it because as it now has, come on, buddy, open for me, has a stock cylinder in there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's wired to a small Tamiya and I use 9.6 volt uh, batteries in it. But this is my loadout and I hope you enjoyed it.
and subscribe, rate, comment. Please leave some positive feedback. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.